All right, in today's video, I'm gonna be drawing my cat from life with a brush pen. And these are just quick ink sketches. So there she is sleeping, and this is actual video of her. And you'll see as the video progresses that she's gonna move a lot here and there. So I have to be quick with these sketches. I use, I start out and use a thick brush pen and I use the same pen for the entire sketch. And every time I draw her, I almost always start with the ears and the head. And there's many reasons I do this. The main reason and something I've learned over the years from drawing her so many times in this sketchbook is that the ears allow me to better place the other features of her face, like her eyes and her nose and the markings and everything. They're just really good guides for the rest of the features. And also the ears show the direction of her head. So depending on where her ears are facing and how I draw them, it's gonna really show the direction of her head. Uh, that's one thing I've noticed over the years drawing these. And you're gonna see this whole video, this is gonna be in real time. And I'm just gonna give you some tips here along the way, things that I'm doing, things that I'm focusing on. And the reason I usually start with her ears and her face and her head, because that's kind of the focal point, her face. I want her face to be the focal point. And also, <laughs> something else that I've noticed while drawing her over the years a lot, is that anytime that she tends to move while I'm in the middle of sketching her, her head and her neck, that's what she's gonna move the most usually. That's gonna be the thing that's the most dynamic. So depending on the sketch, sometimes I'll start with her head, because that's like the focal point. And then other times, if she's like standing up or sitting, I'll try to capture the body first, and then I'll just do the head last because the head could be turned, you know, a few different directions and the body doesn't actually change that much. So sometimes the head isn't that important compared to the body. Uh, so it just depends. Every sketch is different in the way that I evaluate it. And that's why this is such a good practice to do because if you just draw something a lot, you start to realize things, you start to recognize things and observe patterns. So that's kind of what I've learned here from drawing my cat over the years. And so now I'm drawing the blanket here. I'm drawing a little bit of the surroundings and I like to do this because it just brings a little more life to the sketch, puts her in an environment rather than just being her alone just adds a little more interest and details as well to the sketches. So it's kind of cool. And with these sketches, I don't normally focus on shading or anything like that. I focus mostly on texture and her little stripes and stuff. Like whatever is black on her, like her tail, and the stripes on her legs and arms and the markings on her head and face. I'll usually draw those in a little bit, but I don't really focus on like shading, if that makes sense. I don't really focus on light or shadow. I just focus on black and, and the texture and the fur markings. Cause that's what makes her, her, it's her markings. You can see I'm putting that there on the forehead. And of course she's already moved to a different position. So luckily I've already drawn her and she's still kind of in the same position. You know, her arms moved a little bit, things have shifted and changed, but I can still just look at her and I'll be able to finish the sketch. Uh, it's not a big deal. Even if she completely moved already and like left, I could still finish the sketch from memory or just by observing her in different, uh, different, you know, just by looking at her, looking at the markings and things, I can kind of figure it out. So don't be afraid to like draw like your pet or a dog or something. <laughs> if it's moving around, don't worry. So there's the first sketch finished. Pretty happy with how that one came out. 
And now we're gonna go and try to draw this new position that she's morphed herself into. It's a kind of cute, but this time her head's kind of upside down. And here we go, starting with the ear. And we're just going for it. And something I always try to do, I try to experiment with the lines and stuff that I create. You know, sometimes I'll use little dots here and dashes and thicker lines, thinner, thinner lines. I really try to experiment with all this stuff a lot. Um, it's just fun. It's fun and it's cool to try to see what I can create, what kind of look I can get. And there's other times where I don't even think about that. I just draw how I would normally draw and just see what happens. Now notice how quick these sketches are. I, each, each one of these sketches only is about five minutes, five to six minutes. But you can see here, I'm spending my time here really trying to figure out the face. Even though it's not perfect, I know I'm gonna get comments down below like, oh, it's not perfect or whatever. Like, it, I'm not trying to make it perfect. I'm not trying to make it look exactly like the photograph here or the video that, you know, she's sleeping. I'm not trying to make it look exactly like that. I'm just drawing her from life, doing the best that I can in the moment. I don't have a pencil sketch on the paper. It's just practice, it's just fun. It's just trying to observe. And when you do something like this, it makes you focus on what is the most important thing. You have to really just sketch and draw the most important things of your subject, the most important aspects. And that's what drawing from life like this forces me to do. When I draw from life like this, whether it's out in nature and the lights moving quickly, or I'm drawing my cat and she's moving around or has the potential to move around very easily and quickly, I have this kind of feeling of, what's the word? You know, like I, I have to rush kind of a little bit. I can't remember the word right now. My mind is going blank. I'm not sure why, I apologize. But you have this sense of urgency. There we go, that's the word, urgency. You have this sense of urgency. Okay, we gotta capture the most important things. And to me, her face, that getting her face in this uh, and getting it all down, it's important. Her body and everything else, not a lot of detail there. I don't even want a lot of detail there. And it's not really that important for the rest of the sketch. But if I can get it in there, then it's, hey, it's good, I'm happy. So here we go, just scribbling in some more details. There's the markings that I've been telling you about this whole time, just kind of putting some of those in there. Filling in the tail, of course. The tail is always good too, because that that really is something unique to her. Uh, I mean, there's other cats like this, but I'm just saying in these sketches, you can really, the tail is very easy to see because it's, it's solid black at the tip. So it just sticks out, you know, it's a, it's a nice feature to have. Gives a little bit of contrast to the rest of the sketch. All the little details I'm putting in here, it doesn't really matter right now. I, I should just move on to the rest of the body at this point. But I, I kind of overdid the details a bit in this sketch, but I'm still happy with how it came out. You know, every sketch, there's always something to learn from. There's always something to take from it and to try to apply to the next one. Now look at the difference in line there. I did like a, th a thin line and then a thicker line. That's why I love these brush pens. You get so much, you can get so much variety. You know, thinner lines, thicker lines. The only downside of a brush pen is that the tip doesn't last very long. It kind of wears out and then you get these like really brushy effects 
not sharp anymore, but those can be fun too. It's, it's just, it's a fun, it's a fun pen to have and experiment with, but I do wish they would last a little bit longer. But this brush, this brush pen I've had, uh, it's, it's actually been doing pretty well, to be honest. I have two of these, of these thick ones and they've lasted a pretty good while. I haven't had a problem with them, uh, getting destroyed yet. So I guess I'm doing okay with them. Now I do like to leave <laughs> normally, I do like to leave some areas of refer more blank than others. I like to have some white space, some negative space, like an area of detail focused on the focal point, And then some areas that are more blank, it just gives the eye a chance to rest, give some contrast. But in this sketch, don't really have a lot of that. Unfortunately, I was kind of going crazy with the markings and just little textures here and there, but it's cool, man. Sometimes that's how it goes. Sometimes it's just, you know, it is what it is, but let me know what you guys think down below. You will see the finished sketches here in just a second. I'm pretty happy with this. I'm glad she stayed still for this one the whole time I was able to do it and I'm happy with how it came out. So. Love to hear you guys' thoughts down below. Here's the final sketch. And she woke up right at the end. So there we go. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this little video. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.